Well, I'd like to welcome you to Crash Test Chess. Try saying that ten times very quickly and you won't be able to talk for the next week. So, this DVD is a very quick and in-your-face DVD which is going to look at some very critical and short games to try to get you thinking really like a grandmaster. So, I'm going to try to get you into the way I think when I'm playing and hopefully that will improve your standard of chess. So, what I've done, I've picked a couple of games uh, we're going to go over. The first game we're going to look at is a game I had against Korchnoi with the black pieces from the Swiss Championship. So Korchnoi is a bit of a legend, a great player. I actually managed to win this game, so I'm going to go through my thought processes um, over the game. It's only about 30 moves long, so um, hopefully by analysing what I was thinking and with this in-your-face kind of attitude we're going to have with this game, we're going to learn and hopefully we're going to give you some good tips that you can use in your own games. So let's move straight into the game. So I was black, Korchnoi played his famous d4 move on move one, and I'm famous for playing the Dutch defence, um, but I thought against Korchnoi I tried the King's Indian defence. Now, it's very important when you're playing chess to try to, before the game, think about your opponent and what styles, style of play your opponent chooses. Because the battle begins really in chess before the game has, um, before the first move's been played. So, I mean, in general, I know this is uh, maybe a bit of a stereotype kind of thing, but stereotypes do work in chess. If you're playing an older gentleman, this doesn't go for Korchnoi, by the way, necessarily, because he's amazing at tactics and everything. But generally, if you're playing an older player, they prefer very stable positions traditional games where there's not a lot of action going on. So I really wanted to try to create a very sharp opening battle and a tactical battle because I thought that was my best way of defeating Korchnoi. So that's why I chose the King's Indian defence in the hope of a, of, of a very sharp battle. I needed to win this as well because I was a point behind Korchnoi to catch him up in the standing of the tournament. So that's why I chose the King's Indian defence with Knight to F6. Um, Korchnoi is a very principled player. So he played a very standard um, setup with c4, so g6, knight to c3 was played, bishop to g7, and e4. So he goes for the standard large centre build-up. Now the King's Indian defence is what they call a hyper-modern opening, and it's been favoured by some of the most dynamic and top players in the world. Now the idea of the King's Indian defence is really to attack a white's centre, and so eventually you can um, try to get the plan of e5 in, with f5 to come later to gain space to attack on the King's side. But you do lose a lot of space, and it's very important actually actually, when you're playing chess, to be very comfortable with the openings you play. I mean, I've taught a lot of people in my life, and one of the key things is to pick an opening that suits your style. So if you're um, not very happy in cramped positions, then this would be an awful opening to choose, because King's Indian, you, you do get a rather cramped position. So very important, I think rule number one would really be pick openings that suit your style. Pick openings that you're comfortable playing. And another bit of advice I'd say, especially if you're starting off in chess, is to pick openings that you're comfortable playing, but also don't change your openings. I've taught so many players who play about five different openings against one d4. And there's an old saying is that you can it's better to be a master of one trade rather than have no real knowledge of a number of trades. So if you pick one opening, you'll understand the opening very well, and you'll also get to know the middle game positions. So I really only play the King's Indian defence and the Dutch. So, okay, I played the Dutch up to the age of 20, but I understand the middle game positions and even the end game positions very well. So another bit of advice, pick openings and choose that opening and stay with that opening as long as you're comfortable with it, obviously. But don't play a number of different openings because you'll never master them. So after the move E4, I now continue D6, a standard play. Korchnoi now played the classical variation with knight to f3, which is uh, the most popular way of playing against the King's Indian. The knight is very well placed on f3. Um, I castled. And now Korchnoi's played a number of moves here against some of the best players in the world, obviously. I mean, uh, 
he's um, he's he's Korchnoi, so everyone knows how many how, how many good players he's played. And here Korchnoi played h3, which um, I've seen him play a couple of times before. But this is kind of a prophylactic move, um, and also in some positions, as I mentioned before, Black's setup or aim is to play some idea of e5 and f5 later on. This move f5, even though you won't be able to see it necessarily in this position, is a key way to start an attack and. In some positions, Courtney wants to play g4 um, to aim against this move f5. So already opening battle has started here. Um, Courtney is maybe preparing against f5 in certain positions. And in the meantime, I've got to try to find some active play in the position. Um, another rule I say, if you've got a cramped position, um, I don't like ever defending passively. And in, in this uh, series of DVDs, Crash Test Chess, we're going to try and look for the most interesting active solutions. And I really want to get you to play actively and um, aggressively as possible um, in your games, because I'm sure this will help your standard of play improve drastically. So after the move um, H3, we've got to look for an active way to do something in the centre. So here I decided to play E5. And this is one of the standard breaks in the King's Indian defence. Um, and there are a number of tactics of what happens if white captures on e5 twice. Um, but the problem with this move is that black nearly always has a knight takes e4 at the end. And the bishop will be able to capture white's knight on e5. Now the standard way of meeting this move e5 is by playing d5. And Korchnoi is a very classical player who believes in the space advantage. So by playing d5, the position is now locked up. So when you have um, you enter a closed position like this, when the pawn structure all of a sudden becomes locked up, as it does here, you've got to think of ways to create pawn breaks. 